um, when, when we talk about using AI tools, and, and I'll talk about this for AI tools for learning uh, from a student perspective and a learner perspective and from the teacher perspective, I think is going to be invaluable because tools like Grok exist or Super Grok, Grok 4 at this time is August 2025. Um, these are accelerators. Um, when I say that, I mean what used to take much longer to create or learn, uh, you, you can chop that in half. You know, I don't have the exact numbers and the data for how quick I can learn something versus another. It's like there, there are certain scripts that I know I could hand roll or just create myself. Like, let's say I was creating a script to just a simple PowerShell script to send one file to another system or to do a backup. I could spend, you know, hours working on that script and trying to get it to work uh, just manually and looking at this knowledge base article and this website and this blog or try to do it off the top of my head. Or I could tell Grok or ChatGPT or Claude or whatever you want to use, hey, I would like to, I, can you please help me write a PowerShell script that sends um, one file from this location to another or that you know, creates a user account in Entra or puts a, this group or this user in this group in Active Directory. I could spend a lot of time working on that or trying to find someone else's code, or I could have Grok or ChatGPT do that. So when, when I'm talking about learning, I'm not saying you're skipping understanding the underlying concepts of the of whatever technology you're working on and, and i'm exclusively talking about like information technology and and cybersecurity. but you know this is broader like this can be used in a lot of different fields and what i'm noticing is like i have people come to me asking about prompt engineering they're like should i take prompt engineering courses what should i do to sort of get better and more used to the technology and my answer to them is like, yes, like learn that stuff, learn prompt engineering. But in my experience, you become a better prompt engineer or vibe coder when you prompt it based on your pre-existing knowledge on a subject. So as I go, when we do like hack the box stuff or home labbing stuff, when I work on when I work on it, you're gonna see me using these tools. And right now my favorite my favorite um, AI stack right now is um, Grok, Claude, and Cursor. Those are the three favorites. And then I would say fourth would be ChatGPT. Just because of the performance of ChatGPT is pretty good. But Grok has, as a chatbot, Grok is the one I go back to because while it, it takes, you can tell it's like taking its time to sort of sort out a solution for you, it works a lot of the time, as long as I'm giving it the right context. And then if I'm using Cursor, which is an AI uh, code editor, I'm, I'll use the chat bot in ask mode, and I'll use Claude as the, the language model. Excuse me. And, um, you know, that, that really helps me accelerate in problems that would have took me much longer. And the reason I even feel the need to talk about this, because some of y'all who are listening to me who are in the industry, maybe you're in the valley, you're like, oh, yeah, so you're just telling me stuff that I already knew. But the broader world right now, I feel like has not grasped the concept of how like awesome these tools can be for you. You know, and I'm not saying they're solving every problem you'll ever have. They're still very hard problems that a chat bot is not the solution but using the chat bot can help you come up with the solution faster and maybe even make you think outside of the box a little bit. But I'm saying the larger world in my observation is, has not seen this yet. Like they, they're like, they still think it's sort of a phase. Um, I mean, you could be someone who just works in spreadsheets all day and you could benefit from it. Like it can write you macros. Like you can, you can prompt it to do what you want it to do in a spreadsheet. Like I've done this with inventory spreadsheets before where it's like, okay, we're doing some inventory. And now that I have the inventory clearly defined out, I can prompt it using like Gemini or whatever 
as long as that spreadsheet is in context, it knows like it, it can it can really work with your spreadsheet and it knows your spreadsheet. And it's almost like you're querying. I'm not going to call spreadsheets a database because they're not. They're a data store. But like you can you can really do some awesome work in there with with some dang LLMs. So it's really cool. I wanted to bring that up, though, because you're going to see me as I go through um, hack the box machines and we do these kinds of things.